What's up everyone? Welcome to your second Blender tutorial. Now, I would have made this sooner, but I was actually playing Scrabble for the last 10 minutes. And I, um, how can I say this so that you would understand? I got pwned, uh, and I was on beginner, so that's embarrassing. So, I decided to give up Scrabble and start making tutorials. So, let's do that. Alright. So we got through tutorial one, installing Blender, and now we have Blender open in the second tutorial. And in case you didn't remember, don't close your DOS box or else the program will close. Now, the first thing we need to do is learn what all this crap is, what all these buttons and words and fancy symbols mean. So let's get right into it. Well, the main part of your screen is where you view your 3D object. And yes, there is actually a 3D object here. We're just looking at it from the direct top. This is actually a box, but when you look at something from the direct top, especially a box, it looks 2D. So the first thing we want to learn how to do is navigate around and view our objects in different ways. Um, one of the most common things we're going to learn how to do is zoom. We're going to be doing that a lot, zooming. So what you need to do is click somewhere in here and with your scroll scroll wheel, your middle mouse button, just roll it in and out. When you roll it towards you, it zooms out. When you roll it in, it zooms in. Not that complicated. So after that, um, I guess another common thing you're going to do is want to rotate this. So let me uh, prove to you guys that this is 3D. In your middle mouse button, then when you just scrolled, click it and hold it down. And then when you turn it like this, and my middle mouse button is held down right now you can begin to see the 3d of it so rolling zooms it out and holding it down and turning rotates it just like that so now we know how to zoom and also rotate what else can we do well um, this isn't really a common one that you guys are going to be using a lot but if you hold down shift and click with your wheel in the middle same button we've been using and drag it it pans instead of rotating or zooming so again that shift and drag with your wheel and that's called panning it pretty much is like taking it with your hand and moving it to the side so again that's not like frying pan that's like moving it like a camera pan so don't get confused by that so aside from uh, the different ways we can move this around or look at it there are two different views that we're going to be using commonly and that's the solid right here and we can also view the borders by pressing Z on our keyboard so go ahead and press Z on your keyboard and look what happens you get this which is called um, the wireframe mode and that's pretty much all the borders of your object so if you have a pretty complicated object we're actually going to be working in this mode um, most of the time but for now press Z again and you get back to solid mode and there are also different modes in that those are just two most common if you want more modes than that go ahead and click this little drop down list the one with the box and four little boxes around it and you have bounding box wireframe solid shaded and uh, textured but when you press Z the solid and wireframe those are two mo most common ones so just stick with those for now now the next thing I want to come over or go over in the most common um, toolbox you're probably going to be using you can't even see on here what you need to do is put your mouse somewhere in here um, anywhere and press space so again click right here and press space and once you do this little toolbox it's called is going to pop up um, this has a bunch of different things that we're going to be using to uh, well if you just look what they say you're pretty much going to know what to do you can add all this stuff edit this stuff bam bam and another thing um, some of these are pretty deep in like if you're going to do transform grab move a lot this little letter right here is a shortcut so instead of go having to go here press space every time and then go to something like select border select you just have to remember these shortcuts but uh... you can remember them on your own time i don't feel like going through every one so again that's called the toolbox and how you get to that is a space bar now let's move down here down here are all the context and these little things right here this and if you hover over it you can see what it says um usually maybe I'm not because my screen recorder is messed up but these right here are called the context right here and what a context is is pretty much different groups with different stuff in them 
So uh, we'll be going over these later. I just want to tell you that they're here. So look at this. If you click that button, all of this changes. If you click this one, it changes to a whole different set of links. Um, here's a whole different one. And also another point I want to talk about. You have your main contacts, the six buttons right here, which are pretty much your main panels. And you have sub contacts, which are pretty much your sub panels. So in order to get to these, you just go to the main panel, and these are sub panels. So panels inside panels. I know it can get confusing, but hey, it's confusing. So just deal with it. And aside from that, um, the last main part is right up here. Now this um, main menu bar at the top is a little different than other other. Wait, let me say that right. Other main menu bars in the sense that you, they're called headers and you can have a bunch of different headers and here's your drop down list right here right now we're in user preferences but if you change to any one of these your main menu bars at the top will change as well so let's go to NLA editor and said file just change a view select marker and strip and just click another one randomly um, outliner you get these and those I mean they're all different you can see it for yourself but for right now just go to user preferences because that's the default one and that's what we're going to be working with for now. Now, once you got your view, uh, I just want to tell you this. You probably know this from other programs, but if you put your cursor between two lines, you can also resize this to see more or less. But um, that's just pretty much for custom views. And I like working with the default, especially since I'm doing tutorials. Everyone's on the same page. So I just want to tell you guys, if you want to customize your interface, then you can do it that way. Now another thing you can do is get different views. Now everyone likes working with different view with these menus in different places. In your views, your main views are down here. You got animation, model, material, sequence, and uh, scripting. Now you can either click one of these like animation and see the whole layout changes of your interface. So animation, scripting, scripting is a different one. This is um, especially for writing scripts. Or another quicker way to toggle between views is hold down control on your keyboard and press the left and right arrow like the one you play games with. Go So go ahead and again hold down control on your keyboard and press left or right until you get to the view you want. And this one again is the basic one. It's called the model view. And if you uh, lost it and you want to get back just go ahead and type model right there and that will bring you back to the main view. So the last thing I want to talk about before we get into the good stuff is the last thing you need to know and that's how to render a scene. And in 3D, working with 3D programs, what render means is pretty much your final output is called rendering it. It pretty much, after you're done creating everything, you render it and then you're done. So in order to render this, what you need to do is the easiest thing ever. All you need to do is hit F12 on your keyboard and look at that we got our final product right there and aside from that if you're too lazy to hit F12 on your keyboard you can just go ahead and click this big render button and make sure you're in this context right here so if you're in the uh, shading or any of these make sure you're in this one I believe it's the modify context and hit render and that will also render your block for you so now that you know all the basics to blender we begin getting into the not boring and actually halfway fun stuff so I promise that was the most boring tutorial I know but I had to teach it to you guys so now that you learned that we can begin creating stuff and uh, having some fun so thank you guys for watching don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time